Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I have already mentioned that how the terminology of a science that you're in it is important. And already told, if you want to be a successful mechanic or civil engineer, you must know the right and precise vocabs and terms during your writing, presentation and whatever. So today is the second session of the terminology of mechanical engineering and I'm gonna teach you the second 30 basic terms which is again regarding the mechanics of materials. By the way, the rest of the terms are coming in the next video, so stay with me. So let's go on. At first, I would recommend if you haven't watched the first session of the terminology of the mechanics of materials, uh, please watch it. You can find its link over here because this session is kind of the rest of the former session, you know. All right. As the number 31, I write down share modulus or modulus of rigidity. So share modulus all right as you know the young modulus correlates the normal stress and strain okay so we have the same thing for share stress as well it means share modulus which is normally denoted by z correlates the share stress and share strain like this then i write down bulk modulus bulk modulus it shows the resistivity of material to a volumetric compression there is a relationship among Young modulus, Share modulus, Bulk modulus, and Poisson's ratio. This relationship, okay, as you can see. But this relationship is valid if the material is firstly homogeneous. So, homogeneous. And secondly, isotropic 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 material is a material which its mechanical properties are independent of the direction of measuring so now as i told if the material is homogeneous and isotropic then this relationship Okay, governs among Young modulus, Share modulus, Bulk modulus, and Poisson's ratio. It means by having only two of them out of these four, the whole elasticity of the material will be defined. So I'll write down elasticity, elasticity. On the opposite side of the elasticity, there is the plasticity of the material. Then I write down malleability. Malleability. which shows how malleable and formable a material is when it's under compressive force. However, ductility, ductility shows the ability of material for being plastically deformed without fracture when it's under tensile stress like this figure the opposite side of the tactility is brittleness brittleness Bri 
after loading brittle material it fractures without presenting a considerable elastic deformation and plastic deformation then i would write down roughness rough ness you know if we look at on the surface of this paper for example it looks quite smooth right but if you put it under the microscope you will see something like this which is called the roughness of the material then i would say hardness hard ness it shows how hard a material is in other words it shows the ability of material for resisting a plastic deformation so there could be several ways and standards in order to measure the hardness of a material but three are very famous namely Vickers hardness Brinell hardness and Rockwell hardness so I write down Vickers hardness Brinell hardness and Rockwell hardness then I would say stiffness stiff ness it's the ability of material to withstand an elastic deformation please be careful guys stiffness hardness roughness brittleness and this stuff they are different and so you should not use them install each other okay suppose we have loaded a piece of rod and this is elastically deformed with a displacement of x so i'll write down this placement this placement the slope of this figure is actually the stiffness so we can write down force equals stiffness times displacement and this equation is the so-called Hooke's law Hooke's law the area under this curve is called strain inertia strain energy this integral I mean they are equivalent which shows the amount of energy that material gains through deformation the amount of the strain energy per volume is called strain energy density strain energy density energy density which is equivalent with the area under curve of a stress strain curve like this then I'd say stress concentration stress concentration you know if there is a sudden change in the geometry like the existence of a hole or crack sharp corners without fillet then the stress locally concentrates in the mentioned area 
and this called stress concentration for example if we apply a tensile stress on this ruler like the stress will concentrate around this hole because it's kind of a sudden change in the geometry of this ruler then i'll write down stress concentration factor stress concentration factor it's actually a dimensionless value showing how large the stress concentration is then i would say stress intensity factor stress intensity factor please don't confuse stress intensity factor and stress concentration factor they are totally different be careful this is a very very common mistake among mechanical engineers firstly the stress intensity factor is a factor predicting the severity of the stress around the crack tip and its a topic is related to the fracture mechanics secondly the stress concentration factor is dimensionless however the stress intensity factor is not then i would write down residual stress residual stress You know, suppose if you load a rod for a couple of minutes and then you simply remove the load, okay? Actually, you remove the external load, but still some stresses remain on the structure. So these remain stresses called residual stresses. Okay. There are different ways for applying a load on a structure. For example, this is this is torsion. 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 It's like twisting the structure. Then there is bending. Bending. bending is like this it means applying a bending moment in the transverse direction okay then there is tension 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 is applying tensile stress in the longitudinal direction like this then i would say compression com -pression. which is something vice versa it means applying compressive stress compressive stress again in the longitudinal direction you know applying different loads have different effects and changes on the structure for example if you apply a transverse load on this ruler it will deflect which is called deflection Def lection then if the applied load is not in the transverse direction but in the axial direction like this a phenomenon might happen called buckling buck
So, as I already told, in the next sessions, I'll bring the most important phrases of mechanical engineering related to the other fields as well, like fluid mechanics, fracture mechanics, heat transfer, and so on. So, stay with me and please subscribe for the more lectures. Bye!